Yo, 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 Coach Ray back here with our final piecewise video. Um, these piecewise notes are on writing piecewise functions. So just a quick recap, we did a lesson on evaluating piecewise functions. We broke it into two videos. We did a lesson on graphing piecewise videos. We broke that into two, or sorry, we broke that one lesson into two videos. And then we'll just do one video on writing piecewise functions here. All right? Um, if you have a good understanding of piecewise functions at this point, then the, this lesson will be easy. It's just kind of telling you stuff you already know. Uh, but this is a good way to see if you really have an understanding at all. Evaluating, graphing, and writing, they're all related. So if you understand piecewise functions as a whole, then you can understand all of that. All right, example one, here we go. All right, example one. Um, first thing I want to do is just kind of set up my piecewise function. It always starts off with f of x equals and a big sideways mustache. So I just need to look at this and I see there are two pieces to this piecewise function. So I just need to make sure my sideways mustache is big enough to hold two lines. So I'm going to make it look like this. <coughs> f of x equals, and this is big enough to hold two lines. All right, so now what I got to do is I just got to write the equation of each line. Um, and just a heads up, one of the things I taught you in this unit that will be coming up in your test is writing equations of lines. In order to write the equation of a line, you need slope and y-intercept. There's a video on that. Okay, um, so I'm gonna, I always go left to right. So I'm going to start with my line on the left. Uh, I'm going to start by finding my y-intercept. And it's super easy to find the y-intercept here because you can see it. it. crosses the y-axis right there at 1. So on this one, my b equals 1. All right, my slope... Um, I can figure out, I need two points, so I'm going to use my y-intercept in this point up here. So I'm rising one, I'm running to the right one, so those are both positive, up and right. So my slope is one over one, which is just one, so I'll write that down here, m equals one. So in order to write that into my piecewise function, I just need to put it into y equals mx plus b. Keeping in mind that it, all, it already has the y equals out front, the f of x equals is y equals. So we're not going to write y equals again inside the function. All right, so y equals mx plus b. I didn't put my 1 in front of x because I don't have to. And as mathematicians, we try to write as little as possible. All right, now I need to write the equation of the second line. So this little one down here to the right. This one's not as easy to figure out my y-intercept because I can't see it. You cannot see where it's crossing the y-axis, but I can see the pattern. Okay. I see that it's kind of going up one, left one, up one, left one, from right to left. So I can just continue that pattern. And here, I, it's not even going to be hard. I only have to continue it one more time. Um, sometimes you have to continue it a bunch more to see where it's going to hit the y-axis. But remember, my y-intercept here is not negative 1. It's where it hits the y-axis, not where it hits the boundary. So if I continue this pattern one more time, I'd go up one, over one, and it would cross at the origin, which is 0. So my y-intercept to this little line down here on the right is uh, 0. Slope, we've already kind of talked about it. To get from one point to the next, we're going down 1, which is negative 1, right 1, which is positive 1. So negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. OK, so I'm ready to fill that in into my piecewise function y equals mx plus b. I already have my y equals out front. m is negative 1, x plus b. Plus 0, I don't have to write. It would not be wrong if you wrote it, but I'm not going to write it if I don't need it. All right. Uh, boundaries. I'm going to use commas to separate my functions from my boundaries. All right. And I just need to say this line was graphed from blank to blank. All right. So it was graphed from here to here. All right. That is from negative 4 to positive 1. So I'm going to write it like this. Negative 4, and I'm going to leave space and put a positive 1. And I'm going to put x in the middle. x because I'm talking about left and right when we're dealing with these intervals. Okay. So now, I'm going to explain this a very certain type of way, and I want to make sure everybody understands this. Okay. I am going to try to translate the English I'm about to say into math. What I'm going to try to say first is that this line on the left is graphed to the left of 1. Okay. So if I'm trying to say to the left of 1, that's the same thing as x is less than 1. If it's less than something, it's to the left of it. If it's bigger than something or greater than something, it's to the right of it. Okay? So x is less than 1. And I need an equal sign underneath here because this dot is filled in. 
So if that's a filled in dot, it needs to be less than or equal to. If it were an open dot, I would just have left it less than. Okay, the other one. This one's trickier. This one's trickier. What I'm trying to say now in English is this line is graphed to the right of negative 4. So if I'm trying to say to the right of negative 4, I need to say x is greater than negative 4. But check this out. I've got to do it backwards. So I'm saying x is greater than negative 4. But because I'm writing slash reading backwards, it's going to look like that. Um, that dot is filled in also. So this is going to have an equal sign underneath of it as well. All right. Boundary for that one's done. Next boundary, this little green negative x, I need to say that it is going from here to here. So that is going only from 1 to 3. So from 1 to 3, I put my x in the middle. I like to start with the one on the right just because I'm not writing backwards on that one. That one's a little bit easier. So I need to say that this is going to the left of 3, so that is x is less than 3. And that's a filled in dot right there, so I need the equal sign under here. All right, I need to say that I'm going to the right of 1, so x is greater than 1, just keeping in mind that I'm writing slash reading backwards. And because that dot's open, I'm not putting the equal sign underneath that one. I'm going to just leave it right like that. And that is my piecewise function written perfectly for that example 1. All right, let's go to example two. Um, okay, three pieces. All right, so I'm going to set it up so that I have f of x equals, and I need a sideways mustache big enough to fit three pieces in there. I'm going to go left to right and just write the equation of each line. All right, so the first one down here to the left, this is just a horizontal line which means it's just a constant. So it's y equals just negative 2, just horizontal across negative 2. So f of x equals negative 2. There's no x in there. There's no y-intercept. There's no slope. It's just uh, y equals negative 2. All right, second one, the one in the middle. My y-intercept, I see it. It's right here. We can see that it crosses a positive 4. My y-intercept's 4. Um, I can figure out my slope also. It looks like it's going down 1, right 1. Okay, so negative 1 over 1 would be slope is negative 1. All right, so I can write that. y equals mx plus b. My y equals is already there. Negative x plus b. Okay, last one. I see my y-intercept again. Yay. That is not always the case. Usually we've got to follow the pattern to get all the way over to the y-axis so we can see what the y-intercept is. Yeah, question? Do you have to put it in like a specific order? Um, you don't have to, The question was, do you have to put it in a specific order? You don't have to. But what's normal is working left to right and then your piecewise function going top to bottom. That is an amazing question. Like, it... Test makers could try to trick you by putting them in different orders, so it's not wrong. But what's normal is on the graph going left to right, and then your piecewise function going top to bottom. Great question. Okay, all right, so I'm writing the equation of this last line. I can see my y-intercept across this here at 0. So I have b equals 0. And my slope, I need another point. So it looks like I'm rising 1. That's positive 1. Running 1 to the right. That's positive 1. So my m is 1. Okay, y equals mx plus b. My y equals is already there. m is 1. x plus 0. I don't need to write the plus 0. All right, commas. To separate my functions from their boundaries, uh, I'm going to start with the middle one, just because I think that one's a little bit easier. It's pretty clear that this middle function is going from negative 3 to 0. So I'm going to start with that, from negative 3 to 0. I'm going to put x in the middle. Okay, It's to the left of 0, so that's less than 0. And it's an open dot, so I'm not putting the equal sign underneath. It's to the right of negative 3, so it's x is greater than negative 3 if I'm reading slash writing that backwards. All right, and here's what you guys all want to ask me. What you want to ask me is, Mr. Ray, do the arrows always point to the left? And I don't want to answer that because I could write it other ways so that they don't point to the left. Instead, I want you to just understand it's less than this, but it's greater than this. And in one of those, you're reading slash writing backwards. Okay? All right, let's do these other two. My green one, uh, my y equals x. 
Um, this is just to the right of zero. So that one's a little bit easier to write. Uh, to the right of zero means x is greater than zero. And it had a filled in dot, so I need an equal sign. All right, kind of the same with my constant over here, the y equals negative two. That one is just to the left of three, so all I need to write is x is less than three. And since it had a filled in dot, it's got an equal sign underneath. Okay, so x is less than or equal to three means just graph it to the left of three. Uh, the middle one is between negative three and zero, and the bottom one is to the right of zero. That is writing piecewise functions. That's it for this video, and that's it for all the piecewise videos. Yay!